Welcome to another edition of Secrets from the Ancient Pass. One of the shortest ancient paths in the Bible is the road that led from the house of Caiaphas the high priest to the home of Pilate the Roman governor in Jerusalem. You know, when you're walking through the streets of Jerusalem's old city today, it's easy to imagine the day that Jesus was led from official to official in the early morning hours leading up to his crucifixion. Along the way, he was held prisoner, beaten, insulted, slandered, spat upon, and whipped to within an inch of his life. In the process, there's an important detail that John gives us as he writes about all that happened on that horrible morning. Then the Jewish leaders took Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was early morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanness, they did not enter the palace because they wanted to be able to eat the Passover. And so Pilate came out to them. <laughs> now picture this. Don't miss the irony of all that happens here. The top religious leaders of God's people wanted to murder a man, an innocent man, a man who threatened their hold on power, money, and influence for sure. But murder? Had they forgotten one of the ten rules? Thou shalt not kill? It appears they were justifying their immoral actions through religious zeal. In the name of God, they were ready to kill the Son of God. When Caiaphas, Annas, and the high priest got to Pilate's home, the palace, they insisted that the governor come out to the courtyard because they would be unclean if they went inside his home. Since Pilate believed in Roman gods, being in his home would disqualify them from attending the religious ceremonies of the weekend. In reality, there was no law in Torah that forbade them from entering the home of a non-believer. In fact, the rule against touching a man like Pilate or anything that he might have touched, that was just a custom. It was a ritual. It was a man-made rule. God had not forbidden such a thing. In fact, God wanted his people to love non-believers and to be a positive influence on those non-believers. Long before, God had asked Abram to move to a new land, a land God would give him and his descendants. We've called this land the promised land ever since. The reason Abram was given this place in the world, God told him that he would be a blessing to all people, to all nations. As Abram moved, practically everyone he met along the way was a non-believer in the one true God. Every time he had a conversation with a new neighbor, every time he had a meal with someone in a new town, Abram was engaging with people who served pagan gods. Now, all along the way, Abram, who would become known as Abraham, showed people from different cultures that his God was different. And some of those people, they were changed forever. Jesus engaged people who believed in other gods, too. He visited the pagan cities of Tyre, Sidon, Caesarea Philippi, and the Decapolis. And if that didn't make him unclean by the standards of those leaders in Jerusalem, well, Jesus was constantly touching people with diseases and even the bodies of people who had died. Jesus was not afraid to touch lepers. <laughs> oh, Jesus was the light of the world, and his light was love. That love, boy, it changed people. In the words of the Bible, Jesus made unclean people clean. But in between Abraham's original call and the incredible ministry of Jesus, something went horribly awry. There were just too many rules. There was too much corruption. The people had become self-centered, even hating the people they were supposed to influence with love. The religious leaders in Jerusalem had lost their ability to recognize love even when it was standing right in front of them. In fact, they were more committed to following their own rules about religion than loving the people they were supposed to be serving. It was so messed up, they thought they were clean as they arranged for the crucifixion of Jesus. Now, if you've made it this far into this message, you're probably a follower of Jesus. Do I need to tell you that even followers of Jesus can lose their way with religious rules, rituals, or customs? 
Do I need to remind you that it's possible for followers of Jesus to have trouble with prejudice, class identification, or having mercy on sinners? You know, sometimes churches can argue about things that just don't matter while forgetting about their responsibility to be a light in a very dark culture. Sometimes we can look as foolish and as hateful as Caiaphas and his high priest. Oh, God forbid that we would forget to be a light to the world while focusing on things that don't really matter and doing harm to the cause of Jesus in the process. I pray that you will walk with Jesus this very week. I pray that you will go with him into a dark world that desperately needs the light of hope. Love the people you meet, whoever they are. Show them what it means to model the sacrificial love of Christ. Tell them about the eternal hope that you have. And watch the light of the world bring joy to others and to you. Thanks for joining us. I'm Andy Cook.